Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Andy Park. Welcome back to this channel. This video is part two of complete tutorial on using Microsoft Teams chat. If you missed the first one, click on the card above. Here's a list of topics we'll cover today. And the timestamp is in the description. So feel free to jump ahead to the section you're interested in. In the last video, we explored all the things that you can do in a private chat message. In this video, we're going to start out by switching over to the channels conversation and I'll highlight some of the unique features. We're in the general channel of this team site. Right off the bat, we see a button to start a new conversation. First thing we should know is that everyone in this team site will be able to view and participate in this conversation. If you want to see the list of people who belong to this team, the simplest way is to click on the info button on the top right. Let's start a new conversation. As with the chat, we have the option to expand the Compose box. Here, we have the option to change this from a normal conversation to an announcement. In the default choice of new conversation, we have the option to include a subject. In the announcement, we can add a headline and customize the banner color or add a background image. We can even add a subhead if we choose. Whether we're in the announcement mode or the new conversation mode, we have the option to specify whether everyone can reply to this post or just you and the moderator can reply. And then we also have the option to post this in multiple channels. If we click on this button, we have the option to select additional channels by navigating to it and clicking and hitting update. The formatting options here are exactly the same as the ones available in private chat. So I won't go through them again here. And if we have a lot of people in this team and the conversation applies to a specific few, we can at mention them by hitting the at symbol followed by their name. This way, not only will the at mentioned person or people get notified, but the other team members can see that the conversation does not apply directly to them. If you want everyone in this channel to get notified, we can at mention the channel, either by just typing in at channel or by specifying the channel name. We have multiple channels in this teams and want to include all team members, we can at mention the team. Responding to a chat or conversations. When we have a new chat message, it'll be indicated by a red circle next to the chat icon. The number indicates the number of unread messages we have. An unread message will be indicated in bold. Here we see a chat from Jack. We can simply respond by typing in our response in this compose box. Responding to a team's conversation is a little different. First, notice that in the team's icon that there is a little red at symbol. That indicates that someone at mentioned me in a channel conversation. And it looks like Jack responded to my announcement for a project kickoff, indicating that he won't be able to make it due to a conflict. Teams channel allows for multiple conversations to take place, so the conversations are threaded. If we're replying to an existing conversation, we need to use the reply field at the bottom of the thread rather than starting a new conversation at the bottom. We don't always need to respond to a chat or conversation with text. Sometimes a simple acknowledgement will suffice. In this case, we can choose from one of several emojis. And when the conversations get long, we can always collapse the thread and expand it back when we want to. 
Notification. I have a separate in-depth tutorial on customizing notification in Teams, link to the video above. For this video, I'll just quickly highlight two things. In chat, we can select any chat and go to dot 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 for more options and choose mute. For Teams channel, you can select the appropriate channel, hit dot 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 for more options, and we can customize our notification settings here. Activity feed is where you can see recent activities in Teams and channels you belong to. It will also show chat messages and reactions we may have missed. Search for chat and conversations. There are a few ways we can search for a chat or conversation. Chats are organized by date order, and our most recent chats will appear on top. If there are a lot of chats on the list, we can apply a filter. We can filter by the person's name, group, or meeting name where the chat took place. And if we hit the dot 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 menu, we can further filter by chats that are unread, took place in a meeting, any meeting, or have been muted. And while we haven't explicitly covered it as part of this tutorial, chats can take place inside meetings, and they behave exactly the same as a regular chat. In Teams, we can filter either by the team name or the channel name, and from there, we can see our posts and conversations. If we belong to a lot of teams, we can choose to hide those that are inactive for better organization. Similarly, we can hide chats as well. Chats that we use most frequently can be pinned to the top. And of course, channels can be pinned to the top as well. Specific message within a chat or conversation can be saved to favorite. Just hit the dot 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 and click save. These saved messages can be found by clicking on our icon and selecting save messages. The search bar offers an easy way for us to send and search for chats all from one place. To send a simple chat, click forward slash chat followed by the name of the person and message. To see all unread messages, type forward slash unread. To see all conversations where we were mentioned, type forward slash mentions. If you type in a simple forward slash, you'll see the full list of things that you can do in this search bar. Advanced features. When we create a new chat, we can search for people's name, email, group, or tag. For name and email, it'll only list people who belong to the organization. If you want to chat with someone from outside the organization, they must be invited as a guest first to any of the teams. We can go to Teams, Add Member, and enter the email address. If Teams recognize that the email domain is external, it'll suggest to add as guest. The guest then will receive an invitation and will need to agree to the organization's terms and services before they can join. Group is any Microsoft 365 group. Groups can be created from a variety of tools including Outlook, SharePoint, Planner, and Teams. This is outside the scope of this video. For our purpose, just know that we can start a chat using a group name. Tags let users easily connect with a subset of people on a team. We can create custom tags and assign them to people. It's a way to categorize people based on attributes, such as their role or function. To create a tag, go to Teams, 
select the team and go to the dot 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 menu go down to manage tags create a tag give it a name and start adding people to it Now we created a tag called the Operations Task Force that includes Jack, Thomas, and A Park. And now we can use this tag to create new chat messages or add mention them. Okay, so that's it for this tutorial. If you found this tutorial helpful, like and subscribe. If you have tips and tricks for using the chat function, feel free to share in the comments below. Thanks and bye for now.